welcome back to another Planet Coaster tutorial. Today, I'm going to be showing you how to use the all new Quick Draw Ride. This will also apply to the all new Ghostbusters Experience Interactive Shooting Ride. I'm going to be showing you how to build this ride type using the new Quick Draw. Uh, the same mechanics are applied once again to the Ghostbusters ride, but I'm going to be using the Quick Draw Ride as that's going to be the most accessible version of this ride to most players. So right off the bat, this is just like your standard motion platform ride where you have three different track variants. You have your standard track, you have your standard track 2 that has a railings, and you have your stop start track. What this track piece does is that it will pause the car in the middle of this track segment for a certain number of seconds. The number of seconds can be applied in your alternative utility settings. And if you scroll down to the bottom, you will see wait time. The maximum you can set it to is 60 seconds and the minimum is 1 second. The default is 3. So building your ride is just like the motion platform ride and pretty much any track ride already in the game. You have 4 different nodes to build with. You have your turn. You have your banking. You have your slope. And you have your track length. Each track segment has three different control types. You have control pitch, yaw, and roll. What this does is that it'll move the platform of the car in that direction according to your settings. So if I was to set the pitch all the way forwards, you can see the arrow right here is pointing downwards. The car will lean forwards as it approaches that track segment. We hit test and allow it to move. you can see that it starts to lean forwards. This also applies to yaw, which is your turn, and you have your roll. So if you want to make it lean in a certain direction, you can do that. In your main control settings, you can see at the very bottom a show all car direction arrows toggle. What this button will do is that if I place on multiple different track segments and toggle this option, you'll see the arrow for every single track segment. This will allow you to easily identify which direction and tilt your car is going to be facing at that track segment. So the way how these control segments work is that, now let's say I was to set the yaw to 90 degrees to the left. You can see the arrow is now facing left. If I was to build this piece, you can see the next piece is going to reset back to zero. This is because that all these control features here are deselected. These are going to be deselected by default on any piece after your initial piece. So if you want it to be back at 90 degrees, just toggle this option and it'll be back at 90 degrees. If you don't want it to be back at 90 degrees and you just want it to be back at zero, you can't just set this back to zero. But at the same time, let's say I was to deselect it and build the segment, you can see that it's pretty much back at zero at this point, but at the same time, it's not. Now here's why. If I was to build the next piece, you can see this is now at 45 degrees. What this means is that every single time you have an area that's not having any control features at all, it will continuously move itself towards your next destination. So if I was to have control y'all, let's say back at zero in this segment, okay, and let's build two pieces out like before, and then have this segment be 90 degrees to the right. So what you can see here is that you're going to be turning left on your first segment. The next segment will smoothly bring itself to zero, so facing forwards, and it will smoothly set itself to the right. So anytime you see an arrow that's faded, these segments don't have anything toggled. Their settings are just empty. So these are pretty much filler segments that won't um, directly point the car in a specific direction but instead smoothly turn the car to the next designated segment which is this segment here. Whenever you see a segment that's actually 100% visible, such as this one, this is a segment that does have a control point and this one here is directly at zero. Let's take an on-ride view now. So 
So you can see that we're moving to the left, and now we're smoothly starting to look forwards. And now we're going to be smoothly looking to the right. Now, let's have this segment here deselected from its control points, so that way it will smoothly transition between here. Let's take a look what the difference is. Did you spot the difference? If you didn't, allow me to explain it to you. The difference between those two different uh, takes is that the one that does not have the control points in the middle, that is directly facing back at zero degrees, will actually smoothly transition compared to the other one where if it was set to zero degrees in the center, it will have a little moment of just looking directly straight for a few seconds. So if you want a whole section of your track to smoothly transition, make sure that you have those smooth transition points where you don't have any control points set in the middle. Now that you understand the basic idea of the movement of the car, let's move into the actual targets. The base game comes with nine targets. If you were to buy the Ghostbusters pack, you'll get additional targets to choose from. Since we're not focusing on the Ghostbusters pack, we're just going to put that to the side for now. Let's take a look at the base game targets. Here are your targets from the base game. Each target type has three different sizes, large, medium, and small. Over on our left, we have our arm targets. These are targets that will swoop around a corner. Over here, we have our flipper targets. Compared to our arm targets, these targets here will also swoop around a corner at a much smaller radius. Our final target type is just a stationary target. These targets don't move at all, they're just in a single spot. Now, to get these links to your ride, all you want to do is select your ride type, head over to the very last tab called Shooting Ride and Triggers, and click on Edit Shooting Ride. Now, in this menu here, you want to click on Connect Targets. Selecting targets is easy. Just like selecting objects, holding Shift will allow you to select multiple objects at once when you click on them, and holding Control will allow you to deselect them. So while holding Shift, I can just highlight all these targets at once, and just hit Confirm. Now we're going to edit the trigger sequence. In our trigger sequence, we just want to click on add trigger. Here is a trigger point. Our trigger point here, we just move it to wherever we want the trigger to be activated on the track. Let's say right here the moment we turn left. Now we're going to connect an object. So over here in the corner, we have 16 available triggerable scenery. This is the number of triggerable objects that are currently in your map. Over on the left here, I have an example, so uh, this is where the action number is coming from. But over here on our right are the ones that we want to use for this ride. So we're just going to select the targets that we want to be using. Let's use the far left one for now. So as you can see, it's now being moved to its neutral position. As the car goes over this trigger node, you can see the target comes up and it'll go back down after three seconds. We can adjust this three second timer. To do that, head over to these three dots in the corner. So in this menu here, we have a play on trigger selected and play for three seconds. This means that this target here will play for three seconds total whenever the car passes this node. 
Now there's multiple different trigger types that you can choose from, but for now we're just going to stick on play on trigger just to keep things simple. Right down here in our number of seconds we can change this to whatever we want. So if you want this target to play for maybe 10 seconds, you can do that. Just simply type it in or you can just change it by using this arrow. Now that we have it set up, let's head into the ride. So we're just going to hit done, head over to the shooting ride, then head down to test shooting ride. We're just going to reset our testing and then head into test shooting ride. So a little mistake on my end, I realized I wasn't capturing my cursor for you guys, so uh, I have to do this whole segment part right here again. But basically, uh, inside the shooting ride, your mouse becomes a target. So let's just restart this. So there we go, you can see that my cursor is now a target. And we can shoot, and you can see that there's a, a red little glow whenever I uh, fire my gun. And I can't move my camera at all, my camera is locked to whatever the car is looking at. So, heading back over to our ride here, to test the shooting ride, we're going to shoot our targets. Our target comes up, and we shoot it, and we get 10 points. That's really it. It's that simple. <laughs> so let's head over to my example ride over here. Now, this ride over here is a bit of a mess. This was just me trying to mess around to get the general idea of how this works. Because uh, I didn't really want to build anything too fancy right now. I'll probably build a really... Uh, detailed version of the quick draw ride sometime soon perhaps a recreation of buzz lightyear space ranger spin but anyways let's uh, hop into it so hitting the shooting ride in the corner we're going to hit test shooting ride we're just going to reset the car test shooting ride so what i did i have all these targets hooked up to a single node once we get here all the targets will uh, pop up there we go. So the way how the score system works is that you get 10 points every time he shoots, and whenever you get a combo, it's another 10 points. So, basically, my next shot is going to be a times 4 combo, so I'm going to get 40 points, then 50, then 60, then 70. That's pretty much exactly how it works. <laughs> it's that simple. Anyways, heading back over to our test ride over here, I'm just going to explain the edit shooting ride tab, how it works. So... There's a few toggles up here at the top. You have infinite ammo, free camera shooting, and player trained triggers only. What this means is that the infinite ammo is that you will miss infinite ammo. If you uh, toggle this, you can now set the ammo limit. So if you want the player to only have a limit of 20 shots, for example, you can do that. You can be that evil person. Or if you want to be the person that's really kind, you can maybe give them like maybe 500 or just perhaps total infinite. <laughs> so next we have free camera shooting. What this means is that you can actually just move the camera to wherever you want to shoot. So instead of actually just having the cursor decide uh, where you're looking, you can just have the camera decide where you're looking to shoot. So if we toggle this and have a look inside the ride, you can see I'm looking around and the center of my screen is the crosshair. Certain can add to a challenge. The next one is player train triggers only. This means that only the, the train that the player is in will trigger the actual events. Uh, I don't know if this is actually fully working or if this is just supposed to be something that is on when you're in open, but it seems to be triggering them anyways. I'm not entirely sure about this last total here. Anyways, the next part here is targets. Uh, these are obviously the targets that you've uh, well connected. So only these targets here will actually count for points whenever they're active. If you have like, let's say another target beside, let's say right here, that's actually connected to the other ride, that means that this ride here can't get points from that target. So that's the uh, pretty much it for the whole shooting ride here. Uh, what we're going to do next is open up this version of the ride here. All right, now that we have it actually open, we're going to hit start shooting ride. This means that you're now actually playing the shooting ride instead of testing it. This means that your score actually counts for the leaderboards. So we're going to try to get as many targets as we can. 
that. Oh god. I got autosave happening leg. There we go. We got 70. Now we just gotta wait for uh, the ride to finish. This might be a little while. So you can see that you can actually get scored. And you can enter your name, BB Games, and hit quit. So now you can see that there's actually a leaderboard on your ride. So that's it for the quick draw ride. Uh, real quick, we're just going to take a look at the Ghostbuster stuff. So right here, you can see right away, it's pretty much exactly the same. In fact, it is the same. There's nothing different about it other than the uh, car type here. And uh, just like any old ride, you can easily change it out. So if I hit close, I can put Ecto-1, and then boom, there we go. Now this is the Ghostbusters ride. And heading over into our scenery tab, and going by Ghostbusters instead of main game. Let's get rid of main game, get rid of Back to Future. We're not using Back to Future. Oh my god, that's a... <laughs> that's a lot of filters. Uh, so this is, these are all the Ghostbusters targets. You can see that there's quite a lot of them. They're uh, all ghosts, and all the ghosts has different animation types. This one moves back and forth. So there's a lot more movement with these targets compared to the targets that are in the base game where they're very basic, don't have any movement. The only movement they have are just appearing and disappearing where these targets here actually move and you have to aim onto them onto like a moving target basically there's they're more difficult to hit basically and not all of them are ghosts you can see that we got our bins here so yeah and of course you got slammer <laughs> But anyways, that's it for the Quick Draw and Ghostbusters Experience Rides. I hope this tutorial has helped you and you are now able to create your very own Quick Draw Ride with lots of detail or perhaps very minimal detail just to create a challenging uh, target course. <laughs> Either way, I hope this helps you and uh, I really look forward to seeing any creations that you guys make. Feel free to send them in to me in the comments below or in my Discord channel. I'll gladly check it out and maybe even look at them on stream. But anyways, other than that, I will see you guys later. Thank you guys so much for watching. Be sure to subscribe for more content like this and become a channel member today to get exclusive perks and early access to my videos. Don't forget you can also join our Discord server where you can participate in channel events and giveaways.